Putting up to it, it's important we look at the facts. Yeah. Why? Why? Douglas Ross is sounding pretty scared. I believe in independence. And he clapped like a seal. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Planet Hollywood. I'm Paul Hutchin, political editor of The Daily Record. Now, Hollywood is back from summer recess next week and there is a busy parliamentary schedule planned. The First Minister, Hamza Youssef, will deliver his programme for government, which will set out the legislative agenda for the next term. We've also got a juicy by-election in Rutherglen and Hamilton West. Um, in the last Planet Hollywood, we had Michael Shanks on. He's the Labour candidate in the by-election. And today I'm joined by the SNP candidate, Katie Loudon. Um, so, Katie, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Paul. Thank you for having me. Um, so how's the campaign going? It's going very well. Um, it is going very well. We're having a um, positive response in the doorsteps. Um, it's very busy. Apologies if I'm looking a little tired this morning. Uh, we're certainly working very hard, getting a lot of support. We've got um, an amazing team of activists who are fairly putting in a shift at the moment. So things are going well. Before we get on to some of the more political questions, maybe you could just tell us about your professional background and why it is you want to be an MP. Yeah, so my background is in teaching. I was a primary teacher. I actually come from um, a family of teachers several generations back and we, we still have some in our ranks at the moment. Um, I was always interested um, in policy development and putting, looking at putting policies in place and to help people. So I had a, um, an understanding of the challenges that a lot of families um, whose children I, I was in charge of for the, the day were facing. So that, that has always been a, a real driver for me um, because I, I knew that we could be doing better for them. Um, I came into, none of my family were involved in organised politics. I wasn't until 2014 when um, I joined the SNP. I was elected as a councillor in 2017 in Canvas Lang East and I was the Chair of Education for five years. So I'm very proud of the, the record which I'm standing on and we did some really good work there um, which allowed me to take those experiences um, and the, the problems and the challenges that I knew people were facing um, and put some policies into place um, to, to really help families. Um, and I, it would be, it's been the honour of my life to do that job um, and it would be the honour of my life to do that on a wider scale um, and put in place policies which I, I know would help people and to make sure people had strong representation in Parliament. Now, I think it'd be fair to say that it's not the ideal backdrop for a by-election for the SNP. It's been a very challenging six months or so. Um, obviously, the circumstances of Margaret Ferrier and the recall petition, um, there was quite a divisive leadership contest and we obviously had Operation Branch form as well. Are you not walking into defeat here? It has been a difficult few months. There's there's no getting away from that. Um, as I was saying earlier, we've, we've been out um, speaking to people all across the constituency and overwhelmingly the message which we're getting from people just now um, is that they're concerned about the cost of living crisis. That's the number one priority in people's heads at the moment. Um, and it is also cutting through. They are noticing that Labour are all over the place in terms of the, the U-turns which Stammer has performed. And they're very close to the Tories. There's, there's hardly, there's very little difference between Tory and Labour policy at the moment. Um, the SNP are the only party that are firmly committed to ending um, horrible Tory welfare policy, like the two child cap, the rape clause. We're the only uh, party who are, are standing up for EU membership. We're the only party who are talking about these things from uh, with with a single voice um, and are not flip-flopping all over the place, depending on whether uh, Sir Keir is making a, a visit up to the constituency that week or not. I think you'd said in a previous interview that Margaret Ferrier had barely come up on the doorstep. Um, just on the point, I mean, you, you, you know her. Um, I mean, how do you feel towards her personally now? Listen, it, it's a sad situation. Of course it is. Um, and there's no denying it. I was close to, to Margaret for many years. I campaigned with her um, for many years, as we all did. Um, however, I, I haven't um, I, I haven't spoken to her um, since everything. I sent her a message hoping, saying that she was all right. Um, and I was, I, it was the right, it would have been the right thing for her to do. Um, to resign at the time and I said that but I haven't I haven't spoken to her since I haven't had any contact with her since and genuinely um I, I have been asked this question in interviews um, several times and if it is a topic of conversation at the doorstep it has very much been down the lines of people who are 
SNP supporters, SNP branch members in some cases, in one case, a very long term branch member. Um, we were talking about our experiences listening to Winnie Ewing um, back in, in Blantyre back in the day. Um, and just saying, yeah, this is a sad situation, but our priority just now is very firmly on this by election. Um, it's about what people's concerns and priorities are just now, and it's about what we can do um, for people in this area. Do you think she was a good MP? She was a very hardworking MP, yes. Um, just the other issue I mentioned, Operation Branch Form. Um, now just on a point of fact, does that come up on the doorstep? No, not as um, perhaps not as often um, as other um, people are, are hoping that I would say um, or, or are saying themselves. No, it genuinely doesn't. Um, there, as I say, I thought, I thought I'm not going to sit here and say it's it not did, been a no? difficult few months. Um, it's, it's not been a, it has of course been a difficult few months, but it's the topic of conversation which people are concerned about just now is about their energy bills. Um, it's about their children going back to school and looking at uniform. It's about thinking about switching the heating on for the winter. It's about the cost of their car insurance. It's about their mortgage rates. These are the concerns that are the forefront of people's minds just now. I thought Hamza said during the festival that it had come up uh, on the doorstep and that it was an issue in the campaign. You don't, you don't think it has? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not saying, as I have said previously, and I've said just there, um, it's an issue that has come up a couple of times. Um, people are let down. It would have been the right thing for Margaret to do to resign at the time. However, as I said, the vast majority of conversations are about people's concerns just now. Um, I think we find it quite hard to, or it's quite difficult to remember sometimes among some of us that are in the political bubble, um, to think that actually the, the percentage of people on Twitter is rather small um, and perhaps uh, we, we're interested in, in topics in more depth um, than people, um, other people are. And very much so, uh, people's concerns just now are, understandably, with their family and with their finances. No, sorry, I didn't mean the police investigation to, to Margaret Fair, I meant the police investigation at SMP Finance. Yes, yes, yes. No, yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. Has it come up a couple of times? I mean, how, how do you how do you deal with it when people raise it? What do you say? Yeah, it's I don't know um any more about the investigation um than than anyone else. It's a police investigation, it's ongoing, um, and I don't have any um further insight into that. No. Obviously, Labour have got a squad of activists on the doorsteps. Uh, the SNP have got a squad of activists as well. Let's imagine Nicola Sturgeon called you up and she said, Katie, I'd like to hit the doors with you uh, this weekend. What would your response be? We've had people coming from far and wide. Um, we now have a hub open in Rutherglen, which has made a tremendous difference because we can offer people um, a, a cup of tea and a place to sit and rest their weary legs between canvassing sessions. Um, our emails are going out to all members just now, encouraging them to come and help. And I would welcome anyone to, to come along and give us a hand. There's certainly plenty of work to do. Including the former First Minister? Yeah, if she would like to come along, as I say, any member who would like to come along who's, who's willing to uh, to give a little of their time would be very welcome. Do you think she's still popular amongst SNP voters, SNP members? Yes, she is. Um, and not just am amongst um, members, but amongst voters as well. I was having a conversation with someone um, on the, the doorstep the other day who was um, recognising the, the role she played in, in reassuring people um, during the, the pandemic. And she greatly admired that work um, and her commitment to uh, tackling child poverty as well. So, yeah, she is. Just a complete change of subject. South Lanarkshire Council, uh, it's a Labour-run council uh, and some shenanigans of late. The council leader, Joe Fagan, was suspended. Um, there was another Labour councillor, Monique McAdams, uh, who was censured. And I did a story this week about a leaked email from a Labour councillor really lifting the lid on some of the problems that have been going on inside the group. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this Labour council? Um, I will... Not very high, not very high. Um, I've got to say, um, I, I wasn't surprised at all um, by the, the contents of your leaked email, um, which was talking about um, a, a culture of um, bullying, intimidation, um, that it, describing the atmosphere as poisonous, um, although it, it did um, imply that uh, the, the councillor who wrote it didn't think that very much would happen. I've been in council since 2017. Um, I've seen the way that the, the Labour group operate. I know how they operate in public. Um, so to find out that they operate this way in private was not much of a surprise, to be honest. Um, we had written an open letter um, about when the, the council leader was suspended for leaking suspended inf uh, for leaking confidential information. 
um, he was replaced automatically by his deputy. And his deputy is twice censured, um, one, of, one of them for, for shouting a Nazi slogan during the middle of a council meeting, the other one for failing to declare an interest which involves his family. Uh, this is despicable behaviour. It really is. It falls far short of the standards which people expect um, their councillors. Um, I do have some sympathy for Councillor McAdam because it was very clear in the, the standards report um, judgment which came out yesterday that she'd been pressured to leak this information by a group leader. Um, Councillor Fagan real, uh, leads in a very patriarchal, top-down fashion, um, which wouldn't you might have expected from Labour nearly 30 years ago um, in South Lanarkshire, and sadly that hasn't changed. And that's cutting through in the doorstep. People are realising what it means when Labour get a little bit of power here. Um, one example being just the, the lack of public consultation, the lack of interest in, in, in speaking to the public about what their priorities are. They had to perform a U-turn very quickly. Um, as as I, in, When we were in administration, um, we introduced um, a, a scheme to allow part of school budgets to be devolved to the wider school community. So children and young people and parents, carers, people who understand what is going on in schools. Um, and one of their first actions was to to try to to pull that back, to reel that in. Um, and they had to perform an embarrassing U-turn on that when they realised it was so popular. Previously, it took us 18 months to be able to introduce any form of participatory budgeting where communities had a greater say in how money was spent because they continually voted it down um, and continually spoke about how they didn't feel communities were best placed um, to talk about the issues which were important to them and where they wanted those pots of money spent. So I, I'm not surprised um, by, by the latest revelations, to be honest. Um, I, I think it, when, when we read the email yesterday, um, it just confirmed what we had been thinking. Um, and the some of the, as I said, some of the, the actions um, which have taken place, 114% rise um, to youth club, um, for, for example, if youth club's trying to rent a football pitch or a community hall would be another example where they, they just laid that at the feet um, of clubs without any consultation. They had one set of meetings which were very far removed um, from where these clubs actually train. And we had literally hundreds of young people protesting um, in Newton Farm, which is in my council ward, um, against this, just because of the, the, the lack of consideration. Decisions are made at the top and they are rubber stamped. Um, and that was a suspicion that we had for a long time, which was confirmed by the, the leaky, leaked email which you published the other day. Just on low politics, what did you make of that quite nasty blog which called into question uh, the performance of um, Michael Shanks as a teacher in his, the, the modern studies department at the, the school where he lived, sorry, at the school where, at which he taught. Listen, I am a teacher um, and I, I know how um, hard our, our teachers work and continue to work. We've had yet another um, set of um, fantastic results for our, our young people here in South Lanarkshire, another record um, in, in terms of positive destinations. Um, I didn't read the blog post which you're referring to, so I couldn't comment on, on that directly. But um, having been involved in education for many, many years now, um, more than I would like to count, I know what a fantastic job our teachers and um, our other school staff um, are doing. I've got two children in a, a local high school just now in the middle of Rutherglen, which had a outstanding, um, a really, really fantastic inspection report, um, probably going to be the best in Scotland um, this year, unless it's overtaken, which I, I don't think is very likely. And that's testament to, to the work of the staff in, in that school and the way they work with young people. You said that you didn't read the blog, but what did you make of the fact that uh, an SNP MSP, Claire Hawhey, shared the blog? Yeah, as I say, I, d I didn't read it, so I can comment on the, the contents of the blog or um, any sharing in that context. Shouldn't you call out low politics on both sides? I mean, clearly Labour have got issues in South Lanarkshire Council, but then you've got um, the senior SNP figures effectively calling into question the, the teaching abilities of the Labour candidate. Yeah, as I said, Paul, um, I, I didn't see it. Um, and quite frankly, um, if I, I spent all of my time calling out low politics in the opposition, um, I wouldn't have time to do this interview with you just now, and I certainly wouldn't have any time to chap, uh, to chap any doors during the campaign. Just on uh, council finances, there is a consultation going on just now, um, which could lead to higher council tax for uh, properties in bands E and above. Uh, do you, would you welcome higher council tax in these properties? So I think the potential changes um, to council tax would affect about a, a quarter of households um, at the moment. And there's a public consultation, <coughs> excuse me, um, which has been on just now. And I would encourage people to share their views on the proposals um, if, before it closes um, at the end of September. 
as I was saying earlier, we know that many people are struggling with their finances just now um, and there are council tax reduction schemes um, in place to help them, of course, regardless of, of what council tax band that they are in. Um, even if these changes were put into place, average council tax in Scotland would still be less uh, than anywhere in the UK. Um, so that, that is... Uh, that is, is definitely something to note, which is becoming lost in this conversation. Um, and I would also say locally um, in South Lanarkshire, it, it's quite interesting just now to, to watch Labour jumping up and down about this, because when it came to budget time, um, we put forward an alternative budget, which was fully costed. Um, it would have included um, extra money for um, the Leisure Alley, for example, rather than the 114% price rise, which they were trying to do. Um, and it also had a, a lower level of council tax. So Labour will, will say one thing um, when, it, when it suits them, but their actions in council um, are there for all to see. But in principle, are you in favour of uh, properties and bans, E, F, G and H, having higher council tax attached to them? I think um, the, the way things are being, so regardless of the council tax um, reduction schemes that are in place just now, um, I, I think there is there's a, an imbalance just now in, in terms of um, council tax bans. And I think the, the burden has fail, ha, has so far um, fallen too heavily on, on those who are in lower bans. Um, you mentioned uh, the fact that you used to be a teacher. There was a story in one of the papers this morning. I think it might be uh, a motion submitted for the next SNP conference calling for uh, private schools to be stripped of their charitable status. Is this something you would support? Right, so um, one of the best things about SNP conferences, um, we get to have these these conversations in public. Um, I wouldn't, I haven't read the the long form version of the motions which are potentially coming forward just now, um, and I, I'd be very interested to to read their arguments and have a look at it. I'm not going to make a decision um, in, until we've we've had that conversation um, as a, a party. That's the the correct demo democratic process um, in, in where that happens. To decide the motion, what's your gut instinct? Should private schools have charitable status, yes or no? Oh, yes or no. In all honesty, I'm going to listen to that debate. I'm not going to make a decision on that just now. I think it's um, it's a, a contentious topic which deserves that full airing. I've never taught concerns? in a private school myself. I've been public sector. Uh, do you have any concerns about the existence of private schools? I mean, some people say that they are the engine rooms of inequality. Yeah, as an, and I, I'm sympathetic to that viewpoint. I do understand where that comes from. Um, however, as I was pointing to earlier, we, the fantastic results which we're getting in terms of positive destinations for young people here locally um, in South Lanarkshire, um, which I'm, I'm very proud of. And I said I'm very proud of my, my record um, being Chair of Education um, at that time. And the, the young people have faced extremely difficult circumstances over the, the past couple of years and their resilience is incredible. Um, I believe that with the right support, any young person can fulfil their potential and it's our job to make sure that they get that. You've been very critical of Labour. Obviously, you're, you're critical of the Tory government as well. Is there a single issue in which you would say, look, the SNP government hasn't got this right? Um, I, I think that the SNP government have been working very hard with one hand tied behind our backs this entire time. We don't have the the full levers of, of um, you know, in terms of, of what we can do with our finances. We can't run a deficit. We can't go into debt. Um, we're in extremely challenging financial times, and we know why. It's because of the Tories' relentless pursuit of a hard Brexit, which Labour are, are now quite happy to, to go along with. Um, it's because of the disastrous Tory mini-budget. Um, so the, the financial situation is extremely difficult for all sorts of reasons as well. We have the, the war in Ukraine, the increase in fuel prices that's affecting um, all of our properties. So I think the Scottish Government have done extremely well considering um, the circumstances in which they find themselves in. I'll just give you an example. Nicola Sturgeon said um, in a speech at the Wester Hills Education Centre that her mission in government would be to close the educational attainment gap. That clearly hasn't happened. Is that not a failure? We are seeing that it is happening. Um, if, if you start to drill down into the uh, into the statistics, so um, I was a member of um, our regional um, regional group um, of local authorities when I when I was chairing education in South Lanarkshire, um, and we could see there compared to the, the looking at the comparative authorities, and when you start to drill down into that, there has been progress. There has definitely been progress. There is a lot of work to do. This is extremely difficult. It's very ambitious targets, a very ambitious aim to say that we're going to close the attainment related, uh, poverty-related attainment gap when we cannot 
hundred percent, you know, we can mitigate as hard as we can as a Scottish government um, against all of, of the damaging, you know, years and years, decades of, of Tory austerity and um, the cruel welfare system. Families are really suffering. Um, I, you know, I was a teacher. When you have children coming in to a classroom, they're living in insecure housing, they are hungry. Of course, that that is going to have a huge effect, a huge impact on their education. And that's very, very difficult to surmount. But there is progress there. Um, and it, it's not just um, things that are happening in schools. It's things like the Scottish Child Payment, giving a, a little extra money to families every week. Um, it's policies like that which we can put in place. When I was in council, it was we were putting breakfast clubs, free breakfast clubs for children into place. We were putting activity clubs for them during the whole breaks, all designed to help families. And so it's not it, it's the, the accumulation of all of these policies um, which which are going to, to make an effect. And the gap is narrowing. We can see that looking at the data. Here's another issue. So I, my understanding is that in 2022, um, 70 people in South Lanarkshire died from drug-related deaths and 93 from alcohol-specific deaths. Is that not a badge of shame for the Scottish Government? It's every single one of those deaths is a tragedy um, for the people and, and for their families and friends. Um, and my sympathy goes to anyone um, who's been affected by the loss of a loved one um, through alcohol or drugs. Um, it is a, a huge problem in Scotland. There is no denying that. Um, the Scottish Government are putting in a huge amount of investment. We're talking £250 million um, invested in the National Mission on Drugs. Um, and that focus needs to continue. It does absolutely need to continue until we get more people into treatment and support, which they need, um, whether it's that's um, enhancing access to residential um, rehabilitation, it's driving the rollout of medication-assisted treatment. Um, these are, are areas where we're making significant progress, and that 100% needs to continue. Um, what we are, again, um, in terms of drugs deaths in particular, the UK government need to do more here. Um, and it's another example, a very frustrating example this week of Labour saying one thing when it suits them and, they, and then performing a U-turn. Um, it is ridiculous for Sarwar to say that oh, we need to have consistency across the UK when we're looking at measures which we could um, put in place. Um, uh, for him to then turn around and, and change his mind in, in the, the heat of a, a by-election campaign it is simply playing politics with people's lives. Um, and I find that pretty disgusting, to be honest. Isn't it also the case though, that um, historic cuts to drug treatment services have contributed to those um, deaths? Um, yeah, to be completely honest, um, I, I think this is it's something which... Um, it's very difficult to pull out a single cause. It's, 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 it's multifactorial. Um, there are, are people who ha have written think pieces on, on this topic who know far more about it um, than me and understand some of and understand some of those factors. We do have cultural problems within Scotland as well, um, and you know we could go back to to the eighties to to look at. I mean, the links between deprivation um, and, and drug use and, and alcohol use, and even further, I was, I was born in 1980, so I'm talking from um, from then. Um, but at the, the root of so many people's problems, um, it, we is the way that this has been treated. It's the sort of war and, and drug culture that has been around since since I've been a child, and it's, it's been about not taking health based approaches, um, which other countries are doing successfully, um, and which the Scottish government would like to do more of if only we had the powers um, to reform drug law um, to enable us to do so. Um, child poverty in Rutherglen and Hamilton West is also on the rise. I think from about twenty one percent to, I think twenty seven. Is that not the fault of the Tories at Westminster and the SNP in Edinburgh? It is the, the fault of Tories at Westminster. We are saying we, this is a conversation um, which we were we were trying to have um, as a, an SNP group um, at the Executive Committee in Council last week, and we were shut down. We, our conversation was shut down by the Labour Chair because they don't like to hear it. Um, they, we were trying to... Um, to make points about the two-child cap in Rutherglen and the rape clause with the two-child cap. We're, effect, we're talking about 1,600 people um, who are affected by this across Rutherglen and Hamilton West. These are cruel policies. Um, people are, are really suffering in this area because of it. The Scottish government spends £3 billion a year trying to mitigate Tory policy and, and the effects that that's having on families which live in this area, which can see only too well whether that's um, coming in through my casework or speaking to people on the doorstep, we can see those effects. And that is a, 
that's a lot of money, which the Scottish government would obviously be like, uh, liking to, sp to spend somewhere else um, if we could and for other priorities. But the unfortunate reality is just now that that is what we're having to do. Um, things like the, the Scottish child payment, which have been put in place, that those policies like that have been described um, as game changing. You know, these are um, by by third sector organisations and by charities. That's the kind of policy um, which the SNP government have been putting in place to try to help families just now, and I'm, I'm proud to stand on that record. Um, the Daily Record is absolutely uh, against the two-child limit, and we've been very critical of Labour and Keir Starmer yes. um, for what they've not said on this. But on a point of fact, couldn't Hamza Yusuf's government get on and scrap it at a Scottish Parliament level? Yes, I've heard this argument many times. Um, it's, it is one example um, of a policy which is uh, affecting children and young people and families. It's not, however, the only one. Um, and it's not, however, the only reason that people, um, including people who've never found themselves in financial difficulties before, are having to seek support and help at the moment and are beginning to struggle. So it's one example. Um, however, there are, are many other families um, who are finding things difficult just now who weren't before. Um, so the, our priority has to be helping as many children, young people, families as possible through other policies, which is what we're doing. And just a final few questions, Katie. I'll, I'll ask you the same ones I asked Michael Shanks. Let's imagine you win and you're in a position where you've got a decent chance of getting a private member's bill um, pushed through and made into law. What, what subject would you go for? Um, I was, um, as I said, it was a press release yesterday. Um, if I was elected, one of my, my first um, acts is going to be to put forward a private member's bill on scrapping the two-child cap. Abortion, are you pro-life or pro-choice? Um, I um, I think this is obviously a really contentious topic. Um, personally, I am pro-choice because it is about saving women's lives. Abortion isn't going to go away depending on what legislation is there. It's been around for millennia. Um, and the only difference, if you restrict women's access to abortion, all that that does is mean that women have abortions in unsafe conditions. Um, sorry, unsafe conditions. And do you support the, uh, the planned legislation for abortion buffer zones? Yes, I do, because I think women should be able to access, not just women, everyone should be able to access healthcare um, in peace. Uh, during People are attending hospitals and clinics for all sorts of reasons, um, and you can't tell why, why, why someone would be attending a hospital or a clinic. Um, there have been protests outside clinics, which I have attended myself for very sensitive and personal reasons, and I would have been deeply upset um, if I had in encountered protesters outside those visits. Um, another issue that Hollywood is grappling with, uh, no doubt MPs will as well, is assisted dying. Are you for or against the principle of assisted dying legislation? Um, I think that's a question which um, doesn't deserve a, a yes or no answer. I think it's one which deserves um, a, a lot of careful thought and debate. And it's quite right that um, Liam MacArthur's approach to this in the Parliament has been to, to have um, that level of public consultation. Um, and that is something which, you know, going forward, if any legislation is, is brought forward again, there, if that was to be um, taken forward in legislation, um, there 100% need to be safeguards in place to protect vulnerable people. Um, and if I was faced with a vote along those lines myself, I would want to make sure that those safeguards were in place before it's something I could contemplate voting for. And if you had been an MSP, would you have voted for the GRR legislation? Yes, I would have. Okay. And um, finally, Katie, the SNP has dominated Scottish politics, I think, since about 2007. They got their historic majority in 2011 and they pretty much cleaned up thereafter. But do you sort of think that you're the, the underdog in this contest, given the, the tough political terrain that you find yourself in? Yes, I think there's been um, uh, a queen of pieces um, written and recorded about what this by-election means um, and, and where everyone is standing just now. Um, my priority is firmly on the campaign at the moment um, and it's about seeking to represent the, the people of Rutherglen and Hamilton West um, and to do my best for them. Um, and at the moment about going out and listening to their concerns and priorities. I'll, I'll leave other people to write the think pieces in the meantime. Well, so I think that's us run out of time. 
thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This podcast will be out on Monday, I think. And I hope you enjoy it and you tune in soon. It's important we look at the facts. Why? Why? Douglas Ross is sounding pretty scared. I believe in independence. And he clapped like a seal. (laughs) 